Hi, I'm Mark Kermode. Uh, One of the things that I do, one of the things I'm most proud of doing is that I'm the co-curator of the Shetland Screenplay Film Festival. It's now just had its 13th year. It's the most northerly film festival in the UK. It takes place in Lerwick every year. And it started, uh, basically, I got invited to do a talk in Shetland and I fell in love with the place. It's very strange, very different uh, landscape to anywhere else. And they didn't have a cinema there. And uh, Cathy Hubbard, who was... um, kind of running arts up there, said, look, we'd love to to start a film festival because we don't really get that many films because they have to be shown in the theatre. I said, but, you know, you don't have a cinema. How are we going to do it? She said, don't worry, there's a lot of enthusiasm. And so we started showing films at a film festival every year, originally starting in the Garrison Theatre, and we got brilliant audiences because it was something the community really wanted and uh, Cathy and Shetland Arts were really, really kind of embedded in the community and... So for a good few years, we, we ran the festival out of the Garrison Theatre. And then, you know, time went on, it was evident there was a real appetite for cinema in Shetland. And they ended up building this brilliant arts centre, the Muriel Arts Centre, which a couple of years ago um, turned out to be the best attended cinema in the UK in terms of numbers of population and numbers of cinema attendances. It had the best attendance figure of any cinema in the UK. This is a place that didn't have a cinema for absolutely ages. So as far as I'm concerned, the real importance of local film festivals is that they tap into, um, you know, an existing desire for cinema and they, they give a community something that, that it might not get elsewhere. I mean, we show films from around the world. We have you know, Look North, which is a strand of Scandinavian films. We have Look South, which is films from New Zealand and uh, Australia. We have directors uh, and writers and actors, uh, you know, some big stars, you know, Bill Nye, Miranda Richardson. These people all end up coming up to Shetland to talk about their films. At our last festival, we were very proud that over 50% of the films were either directed or co-directed by women. Jeannie Finley came up with uh, her documentaries. Um, Sanjeev Bhaskar came up to talk about Yesterday, which hadn't played yet in Shetland. So the importance of those festivals is really that they're they're there for the community. I mean, 90% of the audience at the Screenplay Festival are people from Shetland. It's quite hard to get to Shetland, you know. And the whole point about that festival is it's, it's embedded in the community. It's there to serve the community. It's there because people have an appetite for cinema from around the world. And uh, they want to hear filmmakers talking about films. And all the Screenplay Festival is doing is just trying to, you know, fulfil that need. Plus, we absolutely love going there. Shetland's a brilliant place to be. If you ever want to spend a little bit of time somewhere completely different, there is nowhere like Shetland. Hello, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, a car park in Stafford, sunny Stafford, beautiful Stafford, home of uh, Stafford. Um, I've just got myself a big coffee. 
that was good. And uh, I'm on the way to Danoon, Danoon Film Festival, uh, which is going to be fantastic. It's uh, Thursday to Sun, uh, Friday to Sunday, same place, day to Thursday. And uh, sorry, a bit addled because I set off about quarter past six this morning and uh, get there about three o'clock this afternoon. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's going to be a, a, a good adventure, I think. Lots of uh, lots of interesting stuff going on. I will post some video. I will see you there. Uh, have a lovely day, guys. And uh, uh, just remember, um, I've forgotten. <laughs>
as important as people say it is. If, there, if people want films, if they want to see these films, then there should be a, a, a place for them. And there's also might be, you know, no, no want for them. Some communities might simply just not want to have these cinemas, not want to have these festivals, and that's totally fine. But with the Noon Film Festival, um, after the first film festival, there was definitely a thirst for that. Um, there was a cinema club that was set up, Kyle Cinema Club. And through that, we knew that there was a returning audience um, and they would definitely be interested in what I would term specialised films. So that can be everything from new independent releases to old archive films and everything in between. I saw a film once, or a programme of films, and I came out of it and said, that's the greatest cinema experience I've ever seen. It was part of Glasgow Short Film Festival maybe three or four years ago. It was a programme of short films that were all to do with the idea of darkness within cinema or negative spaces. There was one film, for instance, that was actually just black screen, but it was shown on film, and there was text on it that was basically saying that because it was shown on film, every time it was shown, new scratches would appear in the film, they would appear on the screen, and the film would be different every single time it was shown. So every experience, every audience was viewing essentially a different film. And I think that's really interesting, because that's what we're trying to do with film festivals. That's what most kind of film screenings, a lot of film screenings actually, even the multiplex film screenings are trying to do it now, of make things more live, make things more interesting for the audience, kind of activate the audience in that way. mother is like a massive, massive, massive film fan. She's uh, like a big horror fan as well. So from from my very, very, very young age, I get like loads of like John Carpenter movies. You know, she loved like The Fog and Christine and like Escape from New York and The Thing and f films like that. Um, I remember as well being like about eight years old and I'd pop like Friday night and pop my head in the door and going, oh, like Night of the Living Dead starting on Channel 4. Um, so. And in my house, like, you know, um, we loved, we, we loved, we loved movies. Um, of course, like, going to the cinema was always, like, pricey, so going, going, going out to the cinema was always a treat. But um, we used to always rent um, some films from Global, and my mum never, ever sort of, like, sort of shied away from anything. You know, if we wanted to watch a horror, we got a horror. You know, if we wanted a kid's movie, we'd get a kid's movie. Um, and uh, it's, I, I've always been interested in film. Like, I love film. And... Uh, um, when I finished school, I went to college and done a HND um, in film and TV operations, and then uh, got like, lucky enough to be accepted to the RSAMD, which is now the RCS, to do digital film and TV there and do my BA honours. And I sort of specialised in cinematography. Um, uh, I left uni and worked in the camera department for years, worked on TV shows, commercials, films. Um, and while I was working on a TV programme called Waterloo Road, just been shot down in Greenock. Um, I decided that I was going to make my first short film and I made a, a little short film, uh, it was nine minutes long, called Notes. Um, I, was living with a, uh, I was living with a guy that I never met for three months and I used to write him post-it notes being like, hi, I'm John, I'm your flatmate, there's beer in the fridge, you know, wire into it. And he used to write me back and I thought, oh, this would be a lovely wee story if it was about a guy and a lassie sort of striking up a relationship through writing to each other. 
Um, and it turned out quite well, so we made a further three shots after that and um, we were able to raise finance for a first feature film, um, which was called Where Do We Go From Here, which is a romantic comedy um, coming of age film about a boy trapped in a care home. <laughs> Um, uh, and uh, the producers of Man and the Apocalypse saw my first film at Glasgow Film Festival and invited me to come and pitch for the film and that's how I got the film. If you want to be a filmmaker you need to make films um, and the only way to, to, to make film, like to, to get better at it is to make things. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be blunt, like if you make a shite short film nobody has to see it. Nobody. Like uh, it's as long as you learn from it you can't fail, and that is another thing, is people are scared of failure, they're scared that some people are going to hate, hate, hate it. The only reason you'll fail is if you, don't, if you don't learn from things, if you don't learn from your last mistakes. So it's, it's so important to just go out and shoot things. Go out with your pals, make a, make a couple of comedy sketches, copy a couple of comedy sketches. We used to shoot Monty Python sketches around my back, um, and that's, that's part of it, you know, like, that's what, you, that's what you do with your pals and you need to try stuff out. Um, and when I was younger, like, we had to edit in camera, you know, we didn't have editing software, like, so it's, it's all about, you know, just trying and learning and practicing, because that's all you need to do. Film's a dying art, film really is a dying art, and it's, it's hard to get people into the cinemas now because we've all got, like, our own home cinemas, you know, with Netflix and Amazon Prime and Shudder and, all these sort of like streaming sites now. You've you've got so many movies to choose from that, and you're you're already paying for it. So why why go out to the cinema? Well, this is a, this is the thing about film festivals. As you go along and people go along and they meet each other, they meet meet other folk, they meet like-minded folk, but they're all there to watch films. And the important thing about uh, any film festival doesn't matter how prestigious it is, how small it is. It's just getting folk together to sit and watch some movies on a big screen. You know, you, and there we've got like people as young as like 15 to as old as like 70. You know, like, all sitting in the cinema together to watch the same movie, um, and that's what you want. That's and that's what film is. It's people coming together to watch something and then talk about it. Did they like it? Did they hate it? Debate it. You know, what they, they thought this meant and what they thought that meant. You know, that's and that's the art form of it. And as I say, it's a dying art. So. Thanks to all these cinemas, thanks for keeping me in a job. <laughs>
how to form a character, how to build a basic structure, you know, in clay or drawn. You know, it's the same kind of a rules apply being built in any any genre. Um, being able to make that leap of the imagination from what you've made on the table to seeing it on the screen. So, say from what we've made today, basic humans and animals, to, to watching things like Wallace and Gromit. There is that real connect, and you you can see the thumbprints in there, and you can see that suddenly on the screen. You can see those fingerprints on the screen, and it's not much of a leap of the imagination to take one to the other. And actually, with a smartphone or a tablet and a bit of clay or an action figure, you can make your own creations. And some of the children were making animations in the workshop. Many will have gone on to make their own cartoons outside or um, you know at home afterwards. And you can then upload them to YouTube or whatever. Vimeo, whatever your, your platform you want to use, share it with your friends, do it at school, and it's that instant gratification and feedback that I think is so important um, and also so accessible that shows that you don't have to have a multi million pound studio to make amazing animations. It can be done on a shoestring and great fun. Community fest film festivals are tremendously important. I mean, not just for people like myself, it means I get to travel around the country, sometimes the world, visiting new audiences and visiting new places. But also it means that um, things that they're not, people aren't necessarily open uh, to or exposed to rather, suddenly have this opportunity on their doorstep to watch um, art films and watch these things and get access to it and actually meet the people that make them. So it's not London centric, it's not Edinburgh or Glasgow centric. Um, we can literally bring all of this to you on a small island and having travelled through the uh, through Argyle and doing animated Argyle and things like that, then we've gone to schools and festivals and village halls and brought the cinema to the islands as well. And you know we might have a a community of 200 people, but we'll have 60 people come in, and that's a huge part of the population have come in to see that. I really enjoyed it. It's amazing. Um, normally, if, I'm, if you play with plastic scene at home, you don't really know what to do with it. But just having that hour workshop and giving you know um, tips about how to to start and make a model, really enjoyed it. Oh, I mean, I, I you know I think they're fantastic. This is a such a gorgeous venue. And having you know a film festival is just a great opportunity to bring you know different members of the community together. Ray Harryhausen never threw anything away. There are tens of thousands of items in the archive dating back from the 1930s all the way through to, to projects he was working on you know, 10 years ago um, in, in the years prior to, to his sad passing in 2013. And uh, this collection had previously been kind of stored in London but also in, in Ray's other properties around the world and now we have it all under one roof and we're building an archive to museum standards. So we have a, a museum standard database which we're feeding all of this information into. And it's given us a real understanding of Ray's working practices. Um, it's the second largest animation collection um, following the, the Walt Disney archive. And what's incredible about it is that we are able to restore and protect Ray's models. So one of Ray's wishes was that the model collection be preserved for future generations. And he wanted the, the creatures to look as good as they do on screen. And uh, so with, with all the money that we receive for, for screenings and events like this, that gets poured into our conservation fund. And our wonderful conservator, Alan Friswell, is responsible for stabilizing and occasionally repairing Ray's models. He was influenced by Willis O'Brien, who had in turn been influenced by Gustav Dory and artists such as that. Um, Ray's influence was then passed to Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Peter Jackson, John Landis, James Cameron, and so many others. And it continues to this day, this snowball of inspiration. You saw all of the, the, all of the children here at the Dunoon Film Festival having an amazing time this afternoon. First of all, in the, the Aardman modeling class, and then later making, uh, making their own Ray Harryhausen creations. And we got some wonderful pictures of of, of children making their own cyclops or their own weird and wonderful creations. And what I love about film festivals such as this is that it gives you an opportunity to, to share the film with new audiences, but also to, to speak to people who, who maybe saw the film the first time around. So I was speaking to a chap just after the film who'd, who'd last seen the movie 50 years ago. Um, 
and then you contrast that with the, the you know the, the kids six or seven years old all with their hands up asking questions about the movie so it's a great way of, of spanning the generations and and reminding people about these classic films <laughs> The Waterfront Cinema was a purpose-built cinema. This cinema was a cattle shed, as I'm led to believe. Um, this cinema was built about 1971, um, and not much has changed in this building since it was built. <laughs> um, all our customers that come now, who are all grown up and bring their own kids to come and watch movies here, were once upon a time little kids ourselves coming to this cinema sitting in the same very seats that their kids are sitting in now, watching the same screens. Only difference is we're now digital. They weren't digital back then, and the building is warmer now, I'm <laughs> told. Years ago, in the 70s and 80s, 90s, probably 2000s as well, um, people used to rock up with their blankets and stuff to the cinema. So it was popcorn, blanket and a movie, um, because there was no heating in the building. Um, so no, we have upgraded to biomass and we do have heating here now. Um, but no, it's still the same small sort of metal tin shed that we had in 1971 when it first popped up. Obviously Dunoon being a small town, small community, there's not a great deal going on round about the place unless you have to sort of head over the water which costs money and you get on the ferry. If the weather's bad, it's not great. Um, I have I have four kids here in Dunoon and I find the cinema is just a lifesaver here. We, my youngest being four, oldest being 14, all of my kids can come to the cinema. They meet their friends here. I used to love the cinema. Um, it was more of a treat for us than we couldn't just come to the cinema every time a new film came out. Um, there was myself and I had two siblings. Mum didn't keep well, so it was a sort of a birthday treat or a Christmas treat. or So we found we only got to the cinema twice a year, maybe, three times a year if we were lucky. Um, I remember begging and begging, I think the Spice Girls movie had come out when I was about eight years old and wanted to go and see it, I was desperate to go and see it. And you know, we had to wait until, I think it was my cousin's birthday or something, and that was the excuse. We managed to get to go and see it. I'm a film and theatre maker from the island of Mull. I'm originally uh, from Dunoon and uh, I left Dunoon when I was 18 years old and went off to Edinburgh to study uh, theatre and then went off to Paris to study movement and then uh, kind of segued into film from theatre. And film for me has always been a passion, particularly related in relation to Dunoon, because uh, when I was a kid we'd get left watching the Children's Film Foundation films at the local cinema. And for a Saturday afternoon, you'd watch all these wonderful films like Mr. Horatio Nibs, uh, The Boy with the Yellow T-Shirt, uh, the, boy, the Boy That Went Yellow, uh, and Tony's uh, Tiger T-Shirt, Super T Tony's Super T-Shirt, I think it was. And uh, these wonderful films that were kind of children's films. And so I was completely entranced by cinema from growing up in Dunoon. Festivals like this are a vital part of democratisation of culture. You're taking something like tonight's closing film, one of the most significant films to come out of Scotland in the last 20 years, Ni Passaran, is being shown here. Now that's phenomenal. Not, uh, Dunoon Cinema is not an art house cinema, but with the Dunoon Film Festival, we'll, we're able to show films that are high class art cinema that's really, really popular. That's, so here we are in Dunoon, and that's nearly sold out. In fact, it probably is sold out by now, Ne Passaran, which is remarkable, absolutely fantastic. So it's the democratisation of wonderful bits of culture and allowing people in the remote peripheries of, our rural peripheries of the country to see things. 
and to not just see things, but to be involved in them, to meet the filmmakers, to realise that you're part of a cultural continuum, not just by sort of just passively engaging with something, but actually going out and engaging with something. And the fact that the filmmakers, like Douglas King, the wonderful Douglas King, wants to come here and show Super November and spend time with the audience here to talk passionate about it, passionately about his film is phenomenal. Getting started is the simplest thing. Make big mistakes, make huge mistakes, just enjoy uh, filmmaking, just go and make a whopper of a mistake, make an epic, like try and make a six hour movie in your film. I know a little boy who's now a grown man who at the age of 13 was like, I'm going to animate the entirety of the opening sequence of Lego, uh, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings and Lego. And by God he did it. You know, it's just go and do it, just make an attempt, just play as well and don't take it seriously, just make mistakes, have fun and then once you see something beautiful, Start working out, finding why is that beautiful? Why does that resonate with me? Why do I relate to that? And then from there, build your own language as a filmmaker. Make lots of mistakes and review. Don't just throw them away. This is our digital culture. We tend to just throw things away and not look at them again. Go back, look at it and go, actually that works. or well, that doesn't work. And then ask the question, why does that work? Why does that not work? And it's about you as a filmmaker. It's not about, it's not about uh, anyone else's perception. Yes, it's about your audience and relating to your audience vitally, but it's about you as a means of communication, commu creating a means of communication that's, that gives a testimony to your existence in a way that technology has never allowed until these last, this last decade. So uh, it bears witness to your existence. It bears witness to that you're there. It bears witness to your, a little bit of your soul. And just that being with people, just connecting with people, that human medium of connection is the most important thing. Cigarella mia bit, cigarella, bit cigarella mia bit, cigarella. Lo camminato to nai ni nai na, lo camminato to pare che balla, e balla pare che balla.